attending a reunion of my wife's family. There's her mother, Eleanor, in the straw hat, and her Aunt Selma in the white hat. And there's her dad, Herb, walking up to Uncle Lenny. On the second day, Julie's friend Sadie came to pay us a visit. She was vacationing with her mother on the coast of Maine as well. She had never met Julie's grandparents, Herb and Ellie, before. Is that her husband? Yeah, and she's going to come with us to see the Orgasm Museum. What? We're going to the Orgasm Museum tomorrow at the Maine. No, really? Yeah. I'm not no, kidding. Really? really. It's and called that? Yeah. Well, not really. Well, Oregon Museum. Well, <coughs> but it's about, it's about orgasms. It really means that. It means about orgasms. It's a museum about it, and we're going there. And my mom's letting my grandparents come. No. Yeah. <laughs> That's a bad move. You need to ditch them. Tell them to take their own kind of dress. We're gonna we're gonna drop them off at Burger King. <laughs> <laughs> Here we are at the ordinary. <laughs> physicist knows that in sleep one often finds solutions to problems one has tried to solve in vain while awake. I myself, during twilight sleep, have worked out a whole series of functional equations. I do not mind admitting this because I'm not interested in the superiority of pure intellect over emotions. The human intellect is only the executive organ of the living plasma investigating and probing the world around us. It must be decided whether nature is an empty space with few widely scattered specks, or whether it is a space full of cosmic primordial energy, a continuum that functions dynamically and obeys a general valid law of nature. Neither weather formations nor tidal flow and ebb functions according to the laws of machines. The primitive view of emotional life was not mystical as is our view today, neither was it spiritualistic and or metaphysical, it was animistic. Nature was regarded as animated, but this animation was derived from man's own real sensations and experiences. The spirits had human form, the sun and the stars acted like real living people. The soul of the dead continued to live in real animals. The primitive animistic intellect did not change the world within or without. The only thing it did in contradiction to natural scientific philosophy was to ascribe real functions to real objects where they did not belong. It placed its own reality into an alien reality, that is, it projected. The primitive intellect reasoned very close to probability when it equated fertility of the earth with the fertility of female body, or when it regarded the rain-bearing cloud as being capable of perception. Primitive man animated nature according to its own sensations and function. He animated them, but he did not mysticize them as did his successor or several hundred years later. The sexual embrace, if abstracted and reduced to its basic form, represents superimposition and the bioenergetic fusion of two organotic systems. It is involuntary bioenergetic action. Bioenergetic superimposition is closely linked with plasmatic excitation and sensations of current in two organotic systems. 